Okay. All right. So we are officially live. Um, we're gonna wait. We usually like to wait for our first viewer to come on board, and then and then we kick it off. So a little bit, just a couple of seconds. Stream. What makes StreamYard different from like Google Meet or uh, Zoom? Like, is there any difference between like why StreamYard? I guess. Um. We'll, 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 I'll catch up with you later about StreamYard, all right? These are some good right. posts. So, um, okay, all right. So we have our first viewer. So uh, we want to welcome everybody to actually um, Dr. Glickman of, of uh, vir the virtual speaker series. So um, our guest speaker today is uh, Jay Fiedler. He is a uh, former Oceanside grad, um, former NFL quarterback, but also a uh, big entrepreneur, right? So he's done a lot of things. He has runs primetime camps, I believe it is. And uh, I'm sure he's got some other other things he's got going on. And uh, we also have a guest commentator today. It's uh, Steven Sklar. So for those of you who don't know Steven, he is a major player in our, our communications department in Oceanside. Uh, he's going to Syracuse and was accepted to their communications department. And and uh, you know, write his name down because you're going to hear about him in 10 years or, or probably see see him on, on ESPN um, and doing some big things. So we're, we're really excited to have here, him here today. Um, and of course, I'm Paul Gazzo. I'm one of the assistant principals at Oceanside High School. And uh, my partner in crime, um, Dr. Glippin Rogers, uh, she is the principal at Oceanside Middle School. So, um, you know, just Jay and, and you know what, Stephen, for today, um, we're in our homes, we're not in our offices, we're not in school, so we like to kind of keep this light and, and keep it uh, relaxed. So, you know, please don't refer to me as Dr. Gazone and, and uh, Dr. Glickman Rogers as Dr. Glickman Rogers. You know, please refer to me as Paul and, and Allison. You know, we keep it nice and nice. Um, and for our, our viewers out there, if you're on Twitter, if you're on uh, YouTube Live, feel free to add some comments to the, the comment stream. And, um, you know, if we, there's a question that we see, that we'll, we'll, we'll definitely highlight it and then we'll go from there. All right. So um, before we do that, I, you know, I always like to do my, uh, my early shout out. So Vincent Capone, welcome. Uh, welcome, Ben Schaus. You're always, you're always here. Joe Capone, good to see you. Uh, Adam Utrecht. Uh, counselor at Oceanside High School, uh, Seth Blau, uh, happy to have you here. Mindy Stecklow, Jack Casilio, thank you, everybody. All right, so um, what we're going to do is give the viewers a little bit of information about who you are, your background, anything you want to share with us. Sure. Uh, uh, well, thank you for having me here, Paul, Allison, Stephen. Uh, great to join you uh, on the webcast here. And uh, uh, welcome to all the Oceanside uh, community that's that's joining in. Um, I am Jay Fiedler. I graduated uh, Oceanside High School back in 1990, so 30 years ago. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the status of our 30-year reunion is coming up with all this madness, but uh, uh, it's been a while since uh, since I was at uh, OHS. But I've always uh, been able to come back and and. Uh, uh, stay in touch with uh, the people there, uh, especially my old high school coach, Coach Luisi, which uh, many of you are familiar with, uh, always has uh, brought me back uh, to be a part of the community and uh, and help guys out uh, in the best way possible. Since uh, graduating, uh, I ended up going to Dartmouth College. Uh, I was a, a engineering science major at Dartmouth and uh, played two sports, football and track and field while up there and then uh, continued on with uh, what most people know me for is uh, playing in the NFL for 10 years. Uh, so I ended up uh, being an undrafted free agent with Philadelphia Eagles, uh, played for five different teams throughout my career and uh, most prominently with the Miami Dolphins uh, playing there from 2000 to 2004. Uh, immediately followed uh, Dan Marino and uh, ended up taking the Dolphins to a couple playoff uh, years, uh, uh, four uh, seasons in a row, uh, averaging over 10, 10 wins per season, and uh, um, and then had a chance to finish my career here in New York, uh, back with the hometown team, uh, signed with the New York Jets in, in 2005, and Unfortunately, an injury uh, uh, ended my season that year and, and ultimately ended the career, uh, which led me to the next transition uh, in life. And uh, uh, I did 
do a few uh, entrepreneurial pursuits for for a few years in sports and entertainment industry. Uh, I actually owned a uh, minor league basketball team and an entertainment uh, company for uh, 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 about four or five years uh, before ultimately uh, becoming a part of my family uh, business, which is the summer camp business, uh, which Stephen and I were just talking about offline a little bit. Um, uh, I'm the owner, along with my brother Scott, of the Sports Academy at Brookwood Camps, uh, which is a summer camp located in upstate New York. We're about two hours upstate uh, in uh, the Catskill region uh, of New York. And uh, it's been a family operation for a number of years. My dad was a camp owner and director as, as I was growing up. I uh, actually grew up going to, to a different camp before uh, my dad ended up selling the other camp and moving over to Brookwood when I was about 15 or 16 years old. Uh, and it's been in our family now for, for over 30 years. Uh, you know, it's been a great uh, uh, great way to, to connect with uh, with youth, pass along, you know, all the knowledge that I learned in, in my uh, years of playing football and uh, uh, and being a part of, of various camps and and, uh, and operations over over a number of years, and you know what we're doing now is uh, we offer kind of a mix of uh, traditional camp uh, experience where you get a little bit of everything from you know the swimming, the sports, the uh, lake activities, the arts and crafts, the fun uh, color war activities, uh, and we combine that with. Uh, a sports camp operation. So uh, we bring in some top instructors and, and professionals from around the world in various sports to offer academy programs uh, in sports like football, like soccer, like baseball, uh, basketball, uh, tennis with the, you know, top instructors from around the world, from the NFL, from Premier League Soccer, from uh, uh, Major League Baseball, former uh, pitching coach uh, Leo Mazzoni. We have a sports broadcasting program, which I was talking to Stephen about. Uh, maybe one of these years we'll get him up here and uh, uh, he could start instructing. And we actually start. it's funny, we actually started our sports broadcasting program the year we started it up. Uh, our lead instructor was Audrey Miller from, uh, from Oceanside High School. So she was very instrumental in, in helping us uh, to launch that program and uh, we bring in some uh, uh, broadcasters from ESPN and uh, Fox Sports, guys like Steve Levy and Adam Schefter and uh, 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 Kenny Albert uh, have all come up, Mike Breen, uh, and offered uh, instruction to our campers as well. Um, and in addition to Brookwood camps, I also run a football training program uh, uh, well, primetime camps and uh, you know through that I've been running a football camp uh, uh, annual football camp for over 20 years uh, which uh, is run at Brookwood uh, in, in early June uh, first second weekend in June and uh, I've uh, had the fortune of, of working with hundreds and actually thousands of players over the 20 years uh, some of which have gone on to, to play in the NFL others have, have gone on to you know, very good high school and college careers. Uh, um, and then uh, over the past five or six years, I've also uh, added uh, more localized training sessions as well, uh, you know, working with uh, with local athletes and camps and clinics throughout Long Island and the tri-state area. Great. So, Stephen, you want to you wanna lead this a little bit? Yeah, sure. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start off question – Thinking back to high school, I work with Luisi a little bit. Luisi's actually been, he's pushed out some emails to a lot of the students that he's worked with, trying to get them to come onto this live stream. What do you remember about that process of the college search? Uh, well, it was a lot different than, than it is now. Uh, you know, back then we actually had to rely uh, a lot more on uh, on our coaches and, and uh, uh, people to do the reach outs. And, and the personal connections. You know, there wasn't any social media when I was coming out. There wasn't uh, uh, any YouTube where I could post up videos of myself. Uh, uh, you know, for college coaches to get to know me, uh, you know, they had to come and visit the high school. Uh, so there had to be, uh, you know, there, there was a lot of travel. There was a lot of uh, interaction that way. Uh, I was going out to, to various football camps 
uh, you know, back then as well. But, uh, you know, the majority of it was, you know, your high school coach or, or, or uh, you know, reaching out and calling uh, uh, college programs and uh, letting them know that uh, they had a good player there. Uh, and Coach Luisi, uh, as everyone knows in, in the Oceanside, is, is one of the best at uh, keeping in contact and making sure that uh, that people know about uh, all the student athletes uh, that come out of Oceanside. And you go to Dartmouth, you won an Ivy League, uh, it was Ivy League MVP, correct? Yes, in uh, my junior year, I was MVP of the league, yes. And what is when you started playing for, I mean, freshman and sophomore to junior year, was there any in the back of your head, what was the goal? Were you trying to go to the NFL or did you think that college was going to be the end of it for you? Uh, uh, well, when I went to Dartmouth, uh, you know, initially, uh, you know, I thought that that was, you know, the end goal, uh, you know, utilize uh, football to, to get admission to, you know, a great academic institution and, uh, I was on track and, and ended up graduating uh, as an engineering science major. And my grandfather was an engineer. And, you know, that's when I when I entered Dartmouth, that's where I saw my path uh, uh, in, into a, into a future career. But, uh, um, you know, as time went on, as as things evolved uh, throughout my college career, uh, like you said, my junior year, I, I had a really standout year, uh, MVP of the Ivy League. I was uh, number one uh, passing efficiency in, in all of the uh, of college football uh, that year, and scouts started to take notice. So, uh, you know, we started getting some visits from NFL scouts, uh, you know, during that year. My college coaches was, were telling me that they were getting some, some good feedback that, you uh, you know, it's it's a possibility that uh, that you can make it uh, in the NFL. So, you know, it wasn't really until after that uh, that junior season that you know the the idea of going to the NFL became a reality. Uh, and then, uh, you know, from that point on, you know, that was uh, that that was the big focus. Uh, you know, obviously continuing my studies, continuing uh, uh, to work towards a, a degree, but also you know continuing to work uh, towards that goal of improving myself athletically, getting myself ready. Uh, uh, I got invited to uh, the East-West Shrine game uh, after my senior season, I invited to the uh, NFL Combine uh, that year, and uh, you know, was able to, to showcase myself uh, against other prospects from uh, you know, higher level uh, 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 Division I schools. But uh, you know, I, I definitely had a favorable uh, 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 showing against all of them. Now, sometimes the 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 label of a student athlete is sort of uh, it's misconstrued a little bit. A lot of people think that being a student athlete isn't so much being a student; it's a lot more being an athlete. Uh, what is it like trying to balance that schoolwork with all of the time that you have to spend at the practice field and preparing for games? Well, so, certainly, it takes uh, it takes a lot of discipline. It takes a lot of time management. Uh, you know, principles that, uh, you know, need to go into, uh, into your routine on a daily basis. Uh, um, you know, I grew up with uh, parents who were both teachers. Uh, my mom was an elementary teacher. My, my dad was a phys ed teacher, a basketball coach. So, you know, education was always something that was stressed, uh, you know, in my family, in my home, home life, uh, um, you know, I wasn't I wasn't going to compete in anything unless my grades were staying up. And uh, um, you know, one of the things that uh, you know that I always uh, uh, you know focused on as well was you know I just wanted to be the best in, in whatever I was participating in. It didn't matter whether it was sports, whether it was taking a test, whether it was uh, a math class, whether you know no no matter what it was, you know I wanted to do my best to 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 prove. Uh, you know, that I was as good or better than anyone uh, that was in that class or, or was playing in that game. So, uh, you know, I always focused on, uh, uh, like I said, good time management principles, uh, you know, making sure that not only did I do all my homework every day, but, uh, you know, did whatever I had to do, uh, you know, before or after practice athletically to, to get myself ready for uh, a game or practice uh, that day or, or that week. 
And before that path to the NFL started to open up your junior year, did you have any uh, any idea or set plans of what you were going to do after college? Uh, not exactly. I mean, at the point when uh, you know the NFL became more of a reality, that uh, that started becoming the path. Uh, you know, obviously, when uh, uh, you know when I did get the invites to the combine and uh, and and played in the East West Shrine game, you know, it was a, a a, a reality for me that, you know, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to get drafted, but I knew that I would get an opportunity uh, to, to compete, uh, whether as a draft choice or an undrafted free agent. Uh, so, you know, the route at that point, you know, from my senior season uh, through the, the, the draft and, and uh, you know, leading into the summer after, after graduating uh, was focused on, you know, getting my opportunity in the, in the NFL. Now, I'm going to move towards uh, – move a little bit into the future a little bit. This is uh, – so you played for the Dolphins. You had two games up against the Patriots every year. Tom Brady, he obviously just left. So a lot of things are unraveling from that situation. I got to ask, do you remember any funny business going on when you went over to Gillette Stadium or up to Foxborough to play <laughs> on the road uh, against the Patriots? Uh, <laughs> no, no, you know what? Uh, uh, I, I didn't think about it at that point. Really, you know, a lot of that stuff didn't even come out until until you know after I was playing against them. Uh, you know, Belichick had just taken over the Patriots uh, around the time that I was uh, down in Miami. Um, you know, Brady had, had just taken over for for Bledsoe. Uh, you know, after uh, you know a year and a half of, of my time in in Miami as well. So. Uh, uh, you know, we were we were battling with them. Uh, you know, we we my first year in 2000, we actually won the AFC East. Uh, uh, you know, beat the Patriots uh, uh, that year uh, in 2001 uh, when the Patriots ended up going on and win the Super Bowl. We were we were a playoff team that year as well. Um, you know, so e each year, I mean, we were competing against them. Uh, you know, to, to for for the AFC East uh, title, and and the Jets were also prominent uh, at that time as well. So it was really you know a, a, a three way fight each year uh, to get that. And uh, you know the Patriots uh, had their way of coming out on top uh, for for the majority of the time. And the path to get to that point definitely wasn't easy for you. I mean, you bounced. Uh, you you played for a couple of teams before that. Like you said, you were undrafted. You had to get signed as an undrafted free agent by the Eagles. What advice would you have for students in high school right now that are looking to go on to that next level and do big things, whether it be academically or athletically? Sure. And, and, not just, I, I was, and not just high school, but also maybe middle level learners or even like young uh, students from the elementary levels, right? It's, it's probably great advice for any student, even probably adults, because you had a pretty um, up and down pathway to get to where you had to go and you kept picking yourself up. So I'm, I'm Really interested to hear actually how do you respond to that? Yeah. yeah well, absolutely. You know, I think uh, uh, I'm actually reading a really good book right now called uh, Range by uh, Daniel Epstein and David Epstein, and uh, uh, you know, it talks. Uh, it's basically uh, uh, you know talks a little bit about the the argument today between specialization and and uh, you know being a broad based learner, uh, and, and it really makes the argument that. You know the problem solvers of, of today and the people that really uh, you know make the high level higher level decisions uh, you know have a much more broad based uh, 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 learning uh, uh, throughout their lifetime. Uh, it was something that you know I've always uh, done as well. I mean, I was a three sport athlete. Uh, you know, athletically, I was interested in a lot of different. Uh, 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 topics and and uh, and and um, you know types of classes uh, you know so I was an engineer but you know one of the things at Dartmouth was that uh, you know as as a liberal arts school you had to you know take classes in in everything and uh, the more knowledge that you have on, on a wide range of topics uh, you know really the the more adaptable you are to the ever changing world and and that's kind of the world that we live in right now. Um, you know, one of the things that I've always talked about is, uh, you know, making sure that, you know, you're ultimately prepared for every opportunity that's going to come your way. And, uh, you know, a, a, 
one of the things that happened to me throughout my career, uh, as we talked about, you know, wasn't a simple path to get to uh, being a starting quarterback in the NFL. You know, I played in for two years in, in Philadelphia as a third string quarterback, and then uh, I found myself out of the league for two years and, uh, you know, having to work to get another opportunity to, to come back. And, you know, I spent two years uh, coaching at Hofstra University, playing uh, a season out in Europe uh, in the World League of, uh, of Football, which, you know, became NFL Europe uh, after that. Um, and, uh, you know, all of that was, you know, really just uh, keeping myself, uh, you know, sharp enough to, to know that if and when that opportunity came for me to, to get back into the NFL, I was going to be prepared. Uh, so, you know, a lot of times in, in life and, and in anything you do, you don't know, you know, when opportunities are going to come your way. And uh, I think you got to ultimately prepare yourself for, uh, you know, the opportunities that you want to, uh, to, to, to attain, uh, number one, and also the opportunities that, you know, you may not know are going to be uh, coming your way down the road. So, you know, that's why I think, uh, you know, being a broad based learner and, and learning about a variety of topics and, and, and being uh, uh, versatile in, in, uh, uh, you know, your, in your interests and, and your expertise is something that, you know, really prepares yourself, uh, you know, uh, for, for a lot of different opportunities that may come your way. Jay, can I ask a question um, for the middle school audience? You know, what are your feelings about um, young athletes specializing in one sport um, so much, you know, specializing in one sport um, and even then playing um, with older children or older teams while you're in the middle school? I mean, what are your feelings about that in terms of injury and burnout? And it seems to be the trend, um, younger and younger students specializing in one sport and even like playing up a level, just curious from, you know, the professional point of view, uh, what your feelings are on that. Yeah. I mean, like I, like I was saying before, I mean, I'm a big proponent of, of athletes, uh, um, you know, it was something that, you know, for me, I, I played football in the fall and, and when football season was over, I didn't touch a football again until, uh, until the summertime, uh, you know, went right into basketball, played basketball, uh, uh, through the winter and then track and field in, in, in the spring. Um, you know, I, I think especially at the younger ages, uh, you know, specializing in a sport too soon, uh, number one, like you mentioned, uh, you know, there there is a high degree of burnout uh, uh, from athletes. And then, you know, number two, I, I just think, uh, uh, you know, at the younger level, you really don't know what your uh, skill set uh, is, is in line with. Uh, and a lot of times, uh, you know, it takes, uh, you know, trying different uh, things and, and, and uh, you know, allowing yourself to, to take part and participate in, in different, uh, you know, sports and different uh, uh, activities yeah. to really figure out, you know, number one, what you love doing and number two, what, what you're good at. Uh, and by by pinholing yourself and, and uh, specializing in just one sport, uh, you know, for uh, uh, you know over the course of uh, of the full year, uh, you know, really takes those opportunities away from you and takes uh, you know your ability to uh, you know to, to to be versatile and, and adaptable uh, away. And you know, a lot of that is is a byproduct of you know, the youth sports movements, uh, you know, of today and, and uh, um, you know, a lot of the, uh, the, 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 the youth sports organizations are pushing their kids to, uh, to specialize uh, more, uh, you know, probably more so out of an economic uh, uh, decision than it, than it is a decision that's better for, uh, for the kid. Right. Uh, you know, the parents, I think, just need to understand that and, and, and athletes need to understand that, uh, um, you know, the, they're not going to lose out, uh, you know, by, uh, by trying other things and, and, uh, and doing other activities. And in fact, it's going to, you know, uh, a lot of research is out there that shows that, you know, versatility is, is more, uh, a, a sign of, of future success in one sport as you end up specializing later on in life. Thank you. And why do 
coaches look for those versatile athletes? Why wouldn't they want someone that's been playing like a basketball coach? Why wouldn't they want a basketball player that's only been playing basketball and only been specializing in basketball for the last 10 years of his or her life? Well, you know, it, it, a lot of it really depends. You know, number one, it depends on the sport uh, in particular and the skill. Um, you know, a, a sport like golf, which is a repetitive sport that, uh, you know, you, you, you do the same exact thing from the same set of, uh, uh, you know, you, you stand at the ball, you approach the ball, you, uh, you swing, and, and it's the same thing repeatedly over and over and over again. And, uh, you know, there's not much decision making uh, that goes on in, in the actual uh, uh, process of, of, of the swing. Uh, you know, there's decisions in between that and what club to use and what, uh, you know, uh, how to approach it. But once you actually do the 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 uh, uh, the skill, um, you know, that's something that takes repetitive, you know, repetition and takes, you know, the 10,000 hours uh, uh, of something. But, you know, other sports, especially, you know, team sports that, you know, rely on a lot of decision making, a lot of, uh, 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 you know, spatial awareness, uh, you know, there are a lot more variables. You know, there's there's really a lot more uh, uh, that you can learn from other sports and 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 take to to what you're doing. Uh, you know, I know that uh, you know there's there's a big uh, uh, Jim Harbaugh, uh, who's a coach at Michigan. Uh, you know, when he goes to recruit athletes, he actually watches them play other sports. Uh, and, and number one, it uh, you know allows them to see an overall uh, athletic ability that you know can be adaptable into. Uh, playing football, but number two, it's also uh, you know seeing how athletes react to different situations, and, and the more situations that you can put yourself in front of uh, on a competitive basis, uh, um, you know the, the the more experience you're going to gain. You know that not only carries within the sport that you're playing, but also into you know other sports and and and, and into life in general, because uh, you know. What we do in sports and what we face in, in athletics is, uh, you know, there's a lot of carryover and a lot of, uh, uh, you know, ways to take lessons from, you know, your experiences in sports uh, into everyday life. Okay, so, you know, we, we got probably like five minutes left. I do want to kind of address some of the comments and questions on the side we have here. And uh, I'm going to take one question and kind of spin it a little bit. And then that question is from um, Ben Shroud. So, uh, you played in the NFL, right? And, you know, NFL is kind of known for as a trash talking sport a little bit, right? And and sometimes uh, comments are made that, uh, you know, that may not be kosher or, or, or healthy or, or, you know, just right. And, you know, how did you handle those situations? Like when people – they shouldn't have. How do you, how did you handle the situations? Uh, well, to, to be honest with you, it doesn't happen as much as you might think. Uh, you know, I, th I think a lot of the trash talking uh, is more, you know, especially what you see now is more on social media than, uh, you know, before and after the game, than then you'll see, uh, you know, actually during the game or experience during the game as a, as a player. I think, uh, you know, most of the athletes do respect each other and, uh, uh, and show that respect, uh, you know, on the field. But, you know, there's certainly uh, a few out there that, uh, you know, like to speak up and like to trash talk and, uh, you know, has become a little bit more uh, uh, a part of the game uh, uh, today. But, uh, you know, I think one of the things that I've always, uh, you know, uh, tried to do throughout my career is, is keep a level head in everything I do. And, uh uh, you know, I don't let outside distractions or, or things uh, affect the way I go about my business. And, uh, uh, you know, when I'm on the field, uh, you know, if, uh, if you're going to try and distract me with trash talk, it's not going to work because, uh, you know, I, I have, you know, my focus set on the play that I'm, uh, I'm trying to execute and, and, you know, making sure I'm aware of every situation that's happening out on the field. And you know, I might break it up with a little levity and, uh, you know, Give a give, give a little bit back to you, but uh, you know my focus is going to remain the same. And before I let Stephen uh, finish up with that a question or two, I I do want to give some shout outs some to uh, some new participants, right? So uh, first board of education member Michael Michael D Ambrosio. Apparently, I guess uh, he used to drive around a golf cart with your dad back in the day. <laughs> Okay, so I know he definitely wanted me to get that out there, and um, we have uh, I think you know this guy, right? Coach Luis, oh, yeah. he, he, yeah, he's 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 watching. 
um, hi coach. And I'm um, gonna highlight one more uh, student, and it's uh, Jake Cowan. He's always on the show, and he has a question for you. Do you know how many touchdowns you threw in your career? Uh, you know, I I I think I threw 69 touchdowns in my career, but uh, you have to look that up on Google uh, for for verification. All right, and then uh, we have one more. Uh, new new entrant here, um, to Anthony Chiazza. Jay is your coach and varsity leader. Chiazza, um, all right. Yeah, okay, there you go, right? Uh, I characterizes you as having the right stuff, right? So um, it's nice to have a, a great circle of, of people to, to be around. I think that's that's really important, and we're really fortunate to have that in, in, in Oceanside. Um, so, Steve, you want to wrap up however you yeah, want to do it? One question in, uh, in particular. You said – when uh, and when you were when you just got to Miami, you were following up Dan Marino, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. And you weren't just following him up. You were also in a quarterback battle. You had to fight for that starting role. It wasn't given to you when you got there. Um, what, what, what how did you deal with that sort of pressure of not just following up Dan Marino, but having to compete for that job and having to earn the respect of, you know, the Dolphins fan base that had just been spoiled with? one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. Like how, how do you deal with that sort of pressure from the media and your teammates and, and coaches? Well, you know, like I was talking about before, uh, um, you know, I, I don't, I, I have never, you know, been someone to let any other outside distractions affect, you know, my process and, and the way I go about my business. And, uh, you know, I knew, uh, you know, going in that there was going to be media scrutiny and there was going to be, uh, uh, you know, a certain uh, portion of the fan base that, uh, you know, no matter what I did, was uh, it wasn't going to be good enough because because uh, uh, of who I was following. But uh, you know, I also uh, took the approach that you know I was going to go in there, and the only people that really mattered uh, to me in, in terms of their opinion were the people in, in the locker room with me. Uh, you know, my teammates, and you know, I had to go out and, and earn their respect. Uh, you know, first, and then. Uh, uh, you know, the focus was was on earning the respect of my teammates and coaches and then, uh, you know, going on to, to win as many games as I can uh, in the way that I knew, uh, you know, uh, best to win games. Uh, you know, I wasn't going to, you know, try and, and do what, uh, you know, what, what, what Dan did. I was going to win games the way I knew how with, you know, more versatility than, than he had. And, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's more than one way to skin a cat and, uh, you know, I knew uh, throughout my lifetime to, to focus on my strengths and, and uh, you know, highlight those and, and make sure that, uh, you know, those are being applied uh, into winning football games. And, you know, ultimately, if you win games, then, uh, then, then people are going to respect you. And that was that was the approach. So, so, Stephen, I just have a quick question. Who was your middle school phys ed teacher, Stephen? My middle school phys ed teacher, I had Wynn and then Hirsch. I'm just wondering, Jay, who was your middle school phys ed teacher? Uh, middle school, I think Mr. Playa. Oh, no, Mr. Wynn wasn't your teacher? He wasn't there uh, yet? Mr. Actually, Mr. Wynn was around, yes. Yeah, I had a feeling you guys had the same phys ed teacher and two yeah. awesome Oceanside Middle School grads. I was a year away from having him as my baseball coach in eighth grade. Oh, okay. Okay. He left after seven. All right. a, a lot of the same philosophy, knowing Mr. Wynn for a long time and hearing you speak. Um, of course. Same philosophy. Yeah. So, uh, Jay, so, you know, you went to the NFL and, and you still were driven to do more, right? You, you give back to the community. You, uh, you're you an entrepreneur. You, you're, you do a lot of different things. What, and you're successful in everything that you do, which is super important and, and really impressive. And, you know, what, what advice do you have for the students of, of, of Oceanside, especially because, I mean, you're from Oceanside, right? So you're cut from the same cloth. Um, you know, what advice and what recommendations do you have for, for the students as they transition from the elementary to middle school, middle school to high school, high school, college, and college and beyond, right? So, you know, what do you want to leave our, our viewers with, our students, our community with right now today? Well, uh, I, think, I think it's always been important, uh, you know, to always remember the people that helped you along the way. Uh, you know, whether it be, uh, you know, the, your, your teachers that, uh, that helped you, uh, you know, in a specific class, obviously your parents, your friends, your coaches, uh, uh, that were there, uh, 
uh, you know, as you saw, you know, the people that, that are on this uh, uh, cast right now, uh, Coach Luisi uh, uh, chimed in. He's been, you know, a, a mentor to me for, for a number of years and anything I could do to, to give back to him and, and Coach Kiazza uh, as well, uh, you know, is something that, uh, you know, I'm more than happy to do. Uh, you know, in terms of, you know, advice to, to young students, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, like I said before, I think it's just important, uh, you know, to always keep your focus on uh, on your goals uh, and not try and, you know, uh, uh, subscribe to the goals of others. Uh, you know, set goals for yourself. Uh, you know, try and do the best that, that you can in every, uh, you know, that every opportunity that comes your way and, and uh, you know, keep your doors open uh, to, to opportunities that, uh, that, that, you know, are in front of you or, or you know, opportunities that, that may end up, uh, you know, coming out uh, uh, in front of you and, and uh, you know, be open to new ideas, be open to, to, to new activities, be open to new uh, uh, experiences. Uh, you know, because now is the time to really, uh, you know, explore those things and, and uh, uh, you know, do as much as you can, uh, you know, to really discover, uh, you know, what your what your passions are and, and what, uh, uh, you know, what, what your talents, uh, you know, end up being. And, you know, there's there's time later in life to, to specialize and and, uh, uh, and create a, a, a career and a path for you. Um, but you know, uh, uh, while you're in school, especially middle school and high school is a great time of discovery and, and, uh, you know, uh, finding new experiences and learning new things and, uh, you know, keeping yourself as, as broadly, uh, educated as possible, uh, you know, to, to open up and create more opportunities down the road for yourselves. All right. So that's a great message. And, uh, Jay, thank you so much for, for giving your time as you do quite often, to be honest. And uh, for everyone else, uh, thank you for, for being part. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thumbs up for the coming yeah. days. Uh, Thanks for having me. Uh, tomorrow, we have uh, Andrew, Ma uh, Andrew Maller. He's from Oceanside. He's, uh, he runs the old state insurance uh, business over here. He'll give you some information about the stuff that he he's done. Um, on Thursday, we have a full double header with um, we have uh, Patrick Turk from the high school, Eddie Reisner from the middle school, and Andrea Marzano um, from the elementary school. So we have uh, teachers coming on at, at 12.30 and then around uh, right when they're done at 105, 110, Dr. Harrington, uh, the superintendent of Oceanside, will be following them. So uh, Thursday we have a, a double header and then Friday we actually have some some game uh, video game designers coming on from uh, Pixel Press and video, uh, Pixel Press and Bloxel's video games. So uh, we're going to close the week strong. So good. Uh, have a good day, everyone. Enjoy. I think it's nice outside. Uh, don't stay too close to each other. All right. <laughs> well, thank you very much. That is great no, to be on here. So